Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part six of my JavaScript video tutorial. Today, I am going to cover JavaScript regular expressions. I didn't plan on doing this because I've covered regular expressions to such an extent in other tutorials, but you guys asked for it, so here it is. As you can see here on the left side of the screen, this is just the basic setup that I keep using over and over throughout this tutorial. It's just basic HTML. Now, a regular expression, and I think this is the disconnect for the reason why people keep asking me for regular expression tutorials. A regular expression is just a series of codes codes used to describe a series of characters that you are searching for. The way you define a series of characters using regular expressions is almost exactly universal no matter what programming language you're using. So that means whether you're programming in JavaScript or PHP or Python or anything, chances are you are going to define characters using codes in every language in exactly the same way. So I provided a link to some tutorials using regular expressions expressions in PHP that are very advanced if you want to look into that. Here I'm going to cover the basics of using regular expressions in JavaScript and really the only thing that changes is the methods that you use in the specific languages to perform your searches. Now what you have to understand is and I'm going to define a regular expression right here. I'm just going to call it reg pat. Just like you define a string with quotes, regular expressions are surrounded with slashes. These are called delimiters if you want the very specific name. And here I'm going to give you a sample regular expression. Let's say I am looking for a string of characters that is going to start off with a number between 0 and 9 and I expect that number to be either 1 in length or 5 in length. That's what this is doing here. This is saying what we're looking for, and this is saying how many of these things we expect to find. So we expect a string to start off with 1 to 5 numbers. That's what that says. We then can expect a space to be found there, and then we expect uppercase letters between A to Z, and we expect exactly two of those. Then we expect expect a word boundary. This is almost exactly the same as a space. The only difference is, is a word boundary always must have something else next to it. So for example, if I had D-E-R-E-K space and nothing left, that would be considered a space but not a word boundary. Now if I put one more character in, now all of a sudden that is a word boundary, this space inside of here. So that's the only difference between word boundaries and spaces. And then let's just say we expect the end of our our regular expression to have lowercase digits inside of it and we expect it to have two or more so we're not going to put anything inside of there and that is one way that you can define a regular expression and don't forget the ending slash Another way you can define a regular expression or a series of characters is by typing this in, followed by new, followed by reg, exp. You see these regular expressions are actually of type object reg exp, which we're going to get into here in a little bit. But you could define this regular expression in much the same way. And here I'm going to define this exact same thing that we have up here, except I'm going to use a couple different codes. Now let's say you wanted to define these digits all of these these five characters into just two. Well what you just do is just put a slash inside of there and a D and then you could define everything exactly the same. Then you put in a space again and there really is no way to just define uppercase letters inside of here or no standard way of doing so. So everything else technically would be the same. So let's just say it's like this and everything else is exactly the same. You just put your quotes around it and dun da dun da dun. So there's another way to define right regular expressions. Actually the two ways to do that. So I'm going to create a long string and put all kinds of random information inside of it. And all of this code is on my website. I'm sorry, newthinktank.com. I'm sorry it's a bit slow. I'm trying to adjust to the insane rise in traffic I've been getting re recently. But I promise if you go there, you can get it. Okay, so there's my string. It has my name. It has, has some random information inside of here. So I'm going to show you some of the methods that are available for searching through this string filled full of information. And I'm actually going to copy it because it runs off the side of the screen a little bit here. And I'm going to put it right there so you can see it all on one screen. So what I'm going to do, call document write, and I'm going to use the search function to search for a very specific regular expression inside of here. Now remember, you could have 
actually define this regular expression like I previously showed you, or using search, you could actually embed it inside of it. Well, here I'm going to say that I'm looking for uppercase letters A through Z, lowercase letters A through Z, and I'm expecting 1 to 15 in length for these characters, followed by a space. And this is going to print out the index for the first match to screen. And as you can see, zero is a match. That is what search does. It finds the first location where this regular expression matches and says, where is the index? So obviously my name matches. And what is the index for this string? Zero. So that's the reason why it prints zero out the screen. Search isn't very exciting, not very useful. Don't use it much. I'll go through some of the other ways to represent different types of characters. If you put a dot down, this represents any one character, but not a new line. And you represent new line characters with a backslash N, by the way. So that represents pretty much everything. Scroll up here so you can see all of these. Then, just like we used the brackets before, if you have a bracket and a caret inside of it, Let's say we're specifically searching for th anything that is not a number. That is exactly how you would do that, is to slap the bracket inside of there. And just so you remember, this would match for any length of numbers. By putting the caret in there, represents that there we are specifically looking for anything that is not a number. Backslash W will match for anything, uppercase A through Z, lowercase A through Z, 0 through 9, or an underscore. If you uppercase the W, that will match for anything that is not one of these things listed, and that is going to always be true. This is going to match for a space, just like we said before, and this is going to match for anything that is not a space. And also, just like this is a match for a number, this is a match for anything that's not a number. And this would be a match for anything that was not a word boundary, being the uppercase B. Now there's some other codes as well. Let's say, for example, you wanted to search for zero to one numbers, but no more than that. You would do it just like this. Put the brackets and then follow that with a question mark. The question mark represents zero to one number. Likewise, if you put a plus sign after, the plus sign represents one or more numbers. So we are saying there's definitely going to be at least one number here. And if you put the star next to it, that represents zero or more numbers. So that means the number can be there, but it doesn't have to be. And if you would come in here and put an uppercase A or a lowercase A, that is going to match for exactly one uppercase A or one lowercase A. And the caret also does double duty. If you put a caret inside of a regular expression, that represents the beginning of a string, and a dollar sign represents the end of a string. Now, I always learn by example better, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come in here and just show you how to search for a whole bunch of different things, such as emails and so forth. And this time, I'm going to use the search function just like we did before except I'm going to change the regular expression inside of it. All right so everything's the same just like we had before and I'm actually going to create this regular expression down below just so you can see it on screen. So what does an email address have? Well it starts and can contain uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers, dots, underscores, or dashes. So we're going to put that inside of there. Then we're going to say that we expect one or more of those followed by an at symbol. And yes, I know that an email address can have more than these different codes. But for security purposes, I'm leaving out everything that I don't have listed there. And then I expect, again, uppercase letters, lowercase letters, 0 through 9, dots, dashes, da da da. One or more of those. And then I expect a period. Well, a period, remember, represents any character except new lines. Since it's outside of these brackets here, we have to put a backslash for it to allow that. I'm sure if you're this far along in the tutorials that you understand why we use backslashes. And then I'm going to say, well, we expect dot .com, dot .net, dot .whatever. Well, those are always either uppercase letters or lowercase letters. And we can trustfully say that they are going to be between two to four characters in length. And that is it. That is how you get an email. So what I'm going to do is actually come up here, copy that, paste it inside of here, just like that. And that's the reason why I put it on a separate line, because I knew it wouldn't show up. And if I run that search, 
you can see that it found a match at the 50th index and you're just going to have to trust me that that is exactly what this is right here or right here. So that's how you do a very specific search for an email address. Another thing you can do is use what we call the replace function. I'm actually going to come in here, go document write string, and I'm going to type in replace instead. And here I'm going to say that I just simply want to replace all digits that are five in length, close off the regular expression, with just a bunch of fives. The replace function is much more useful, and you can see that it printed out right here is the zip code that originally had real numbers inside of it and it replaced it with 55555. But I want you to also understand that just because I ran that function, it did not change the string itself in any way. As you can see, the zip code shows up right there. Now what would be really useful and what is useful is whenever we are able to find every single match and you can do that with the match function that's available inside of JavaScript. And here I'm going to create an array that's going to store the results of calling this match function. And inside of here, I'm going to say that I want to match for four to five digits in length. And here's another thing you can do with regular expressions. If you put a G after the regular expression, that represents that you want to find every single match throughout the whole entire string, which is very useful instead of just getting one of them. And then you can cycle through all these guys if you wanted to as you print them to screen, but I'm just going to print them all to screen at once. And you can see there's the two matches for this regular expression. There are other codes just like G, like for example there's I, and you would use that if you wanted your search to be case insensitive, meaning you don't care if it matches for uppercase or lowercase. And then you have M, and if you put an M at the end just like we did with the G, the dollar sign is now going to repre be representative of the end of the line or string, whether there is a new line or not. So if you don't use M, if it hits new line, it's going to automatically consider the dollar sign in your regular expression to equal that new line. And the final way you can use regular expressions is, remember I said before, that regular expressions are considered to be objects. And here I'm just going to create a regular expression. And I'm going to say document right. And I'm going to use the instance of. And you can see that that comes back true. Well, since it's an object, it has some built-in functions or methods, if you will. And I'm just going to go over the exec here because I normally don't use this. I know there's other people that love to use these different objects, but I personally don't find them any more useful than what I just showed you. I find it much more useful to use the match function, but that's just me. If you want to, there's the exec function. And if you run it on the long string like we had before, you could then call regmatch. And what it's going to do is it's going to shoot out the index for the very first match. And if you continue to run this exec function on this string, it's going to continue to kick those out to you over and over and over again. So regmatch, this is going to print out the actual match. And then you can do a couple other semi-useful things with it, like printing out the index for the match just by following it with dot index. And if you file save that, you can see that it found a match at one, two, three. And if we come up here, you can see there's the match. And that lies at the index position of six. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Just like we got it there. So that's an introduction to regular expressions in JavaScript. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do form validation in JavaScript. And I'm going to give you a slew of regular expression examples. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.